and welcome to the Embassy of Canada. I am Giza Merash, I'm uh, the Agriculture Councillor here at the Embassy. And uh, we're very happy to have so many Floridians at the Embassy tonight, especially when Florida hosts so many Canadian snowbirds. Uh, <laughs> uh, I also wanted to uh, recognize uh, Congressman Stu and Congressman Yoho, who were here but had to leave, uh, just, had, just left for, for Congress for some votes. Um, we're also happy to have here our Consul General in Florida, uh, Sue Harper, with us tonight. Um, and, uh, well, without much ado, uh, I will, I'll let my uh, wonderful ambassador, David McNaughton, Canada's ambassador to the United States, take the... Thanks very much, and, and uh, welcome to our embassy. We, we, uh, we are extraordinarily fortunate to have this facility here. Um, we acquired the property in 1978. It was uh, actually, there was a Ford dealership here. <laughs> and uh, it took a while for us to get the right design and, and uh, build it. Uh, we occupied it actually for the first time 30 years ago. It was opened by Prime Minister Mulroney and President Reagan. Um, it's, it's, uh, we're, we're extraordinarily lucky to have it here. We have lots of events. We have over 300 events uh, a year. Uh, on the 4th of July, uh, it's a great place to watch the fireworks. <laughs> I, um, I have twin grandsons who were actually born on the 4th of July, and I had them down here uh, last year, and I convinced them that the fireworks were actually for them. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take them a few years to realize that uh, maybe that's a bit of a con, man. <laughs> but look, um, you know, Canada and Florida have, uh, have shared for a long, long time a great relationship, and it, uh, it only is getting better. I mean, I remember as a uh, political staffer, uh, some projections when uh, I was working in government and, and they were talking about how we needed to get our social security system in a way in which it would actually be actuarially sound. And, and we finally did that by the mid-1990s. So that was the good news. The bad news was as our population was aging, most of the money that was going to go to our senior citizens was actually going to get spent in your state. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and a lot of that happens. We have Canadians who spend many months in, in Florida. In fact, uh, we pay, Canadians pay over $500 million a year in property tax in the state of Florida. Um, and in addition to that, we are your, your biggest market for agricultural goods. Um, and, and the, the the trade with Canada uh, is something that has been extraordinarily beneficial to Florida. It's actually been very beneficial to us. Uh, I haven't seen a lot of orange groves growing in Canada yet. <laughs> Maybe with climate change, eventually it'll happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, so, you know, I this is a celebration not only of all the things that you do um, that are terrific in terms of your agriculture and your um, the innovation in, in, in that field and the, the excellence of, of Florida. Um, but it's also a time where I would like to just leave you with one message if you're going to be on the hill seeing people. And that is that we went through a really difficult time uh, in the NAFTA negotiations, but it came out um, in, a, in, in the right way. We did what we always do, which is actually to figure out a way where we can create a win-win-win, uh, which I think we did. It's not that the agreement is perfect, um, but along the way, we were able to keep our defense and security relationship independent of the trade tensions that we had. That's been more difficult of late when the administration imposed 232 tariffs and alleged but the reason for doing so was that Canada was a national security threat. Um, I can't tell you how much of an impact that had psychologically and emotionally on Canadians. Um, and as a result of the 232 tariffs that were imposed, we unfortunately had to uh, 
uh, impose counter, you know, measures against Americans, including many products coming from Florida. We want to get those off, but we'll only be able to get them off when, in fact, the 232 tariffs are removed. We have meetings tomorrow with the uh, USTR. Uh, our minister uh, is coming down tomorrow morning. We've had some conversations before. I hope we can get this resolved. It would be good for us to get this behind us. We actually celebrate the success of the United States of America. When you succeed, we succeed. Um, and I hope that we can put the tensions of the last couple of years behind us and move on to a closer relationship. We have military personnel who, who live in Florida, who work with your military personnel. We have had uh, our Navy work with your, uh, your uh, Navy to, to inter intercept drugs coming into your country. Uh, we are a good partner, and I hope that when you're seeing people over the next couple of days, you'll emphasize the fact that we need to put this behind us and get on to what we all hope is going to be not just the kind of strong relationship we have now, but a stronger relationship in the future. Um, and so thank you for coming. Uh, enjoy the evening here. And let's move on to the next stage of our relationship. It's a world which has got many, many complex uh, problems and lots of people who are trying to do us harm. We need to stick together as friends and allies and as partners in our economic success. So thank you very much for all you do, how much you take care of Canadians when they're enjoying your sunshine. And uh, uh, Paul, the only thing I can say after that is go Raptors. I mean, <laughs> <laughs>
is human relationships. So the turnout, the turnout here tonight is a great demonstration of the strength of these relationships. It represents an awareness that our agricultural prosperity in Florida, in many ways, is linked to urban prosperity in Ottawa, Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, where Florida growers send their products. Thank you, Canada, for being such a great friend and a great neighbor. Although there are a number of alumni here tonight, and many have DC addresses now, so many of us are far from our native lands and our homes, and so I just want to tell you how much we appreciate all the alumni who continue to stay connected to the University of Florida and IPIS. And even after you've left Florida, I think we've identified over 200 IPIS graduates that work in the DC area, which is terrific. We cannot do all we do without your support. To our Florida Farm Bureau friends, it's great to hold this event each year in partnership with you. Our two organizations are so deeply connected. In so many counties, the Extension Office and the Farm Bureau Office are in the same complex and sometimes even in the same building. You entrust us with your sons and daughters and we strive to help them grow into adult ro roles as leaders and citizens of our state. You work with our researchers, allowing them to use your land to test promising ideas and even sharing your own ideas based on what you see on your own farms and ranches. Science is really a team enterprise. The quality of the knowledge we generate depends heavily on the people who support it. Thank you for being those supporters and those partners. Now I want to turn it over to my good friend and colleague, John Hoblick, president of the Florida Farm Bureau. I look forward to visiting with all of you tonight and continue working with you in the future as we feed the world together. Thanks, and let's have a great evening. John? Well, good evening, everybody. And I, too, want to reiterate, uh, Ambassador McNaughton, thank you for opening up your beautiful embassy to all of us. Uh, You've got a bunch of Florida agriculture producers in this room, and I don't know if they've ever been exposed to anything that's nice, but this is pretty good. <laughs> it's beautiful. I also want to thank your staff for helping arrange this as well. And uh, Dr. Payne did present you with a couple of gifts, and I just want you to know for a fact that when I tailgate at the Florida game, in my glass goes, Crown Royal Whiskey from Canada. <laughs> I think most everybody in the room knew that, but that's, that's the truth. But, uh, you know, there's a lot of things that we can celebrate here this evening. One, uh, being a part of the Gator Nation and all the alumni that have signed up to be here to, uh, to be a part of this event is very special to us at Florida Farm Bureau. And that partnership that we hear, that we carry uh, going forward, not only in the past, but in, in the future, uh, we recognize as agricultural producers the importance of uh, that science and that technology being applicable to our farms each and every day, and how that keeps us in a competitive mode and across not only this nation, but across this world as we export our products. And I, I do uh, thank you for having uh, the, the uh, the business relationship with Florida. Uh, Susan has, and I have committed to uh, sitting down at the table and, and talking further opportunities for Florida agriculture, but it is important. I believe it's $1.5 billion in economic input from our products going into Canada, which is critical to our, each and every one of our producers in this room. That's a big part of our, our, our economy in Florida is our agriculture production. And I too think that uh, we do need to move forward uh, with the USMCA commitment. And I do believe that we have just a little concern, I think y'all are aware of as well, that there's just a little bit of stress on our producers to uh, compete with the Mexican products that, uh, that have been a sour point since the inception of NAFTA. Hopefully we will get through those and, and be able to resolve those things as well. I'm confident that our leadership uh, understands that, uh, especially our Florida delegation and, and especially the relationship that we have to our partners to the north in Canada and how important and critical it is to us. So yes, when we shut down the borders between ourselves and we get in these, these wars with tariffs and trade, 
it's not good for the producer either. And so I hear you loud and clear, Ambassador. Thank you for that. I also uh, think that it's important that all of us in the room get to meet the alumni, get to meet this, this great team of ambassadors here, uh, or the staff of this, this embassy. It's, it's an awesome event tonight, and I can't say enough how gracious we are for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hoblick. Uh, this complete, concludes the speaking port portion of this night. Um, uh, but the Canada floor the reception continues. We are opening the patio doors. Uh, so please enjoy the beautiful view, take photos, and spread the word about the importance of Canada floor the ties. Let's keep a good thing growing. Let's keep Canada floor the ties growing as well. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you.